Hi everybody, Mark Cleborn here from the Photographer Academy. Uh, today we just thought we'd give you uh, the kind of one of the last tours of the Studio One and kind of all the layout and things really. We've been talking about soft boxes and three-sided studios and kind of setting all up in these live kind of academy. We're bringing you live clients very, very soon. So again, this uh, Wednesday live at five, kind of watch out for the kind of scenarios that we're going to be running for you. Um, I just thought, uh, I've just finished another session uh, with a couple of great kids, so I just thought I'd kind of just uh, give you a little bit of a glimpse on that, but today's film is really going to be talking about the actual kind of uh, dressing up kind of area and what we actually provide or what we don't provide for a client and things really. So um, studio as is, we've talked about the high key set, uh, kind of the white wall and the vinyl floor anyway. Um, as you'll know by now, we usually run a two stop difference on the background to the key, so in other words, if we're shooting at F4 as the main key, then the background lights would be set to F8 when they're kind of bouncing off the white wall. If I was shooting at F, F, F8, the walls would be F6, 16. Majority of the time, I'm using uh, an Opta, a big light source, uh, especially good for very, very soft light. As a rule of thumb, it wouldn't be used at this height, yeah? It would be um, for kind of teens, tweens, it would be at the maximum height, uh, pretty much in here. Uh, remember when we're having such a huge light source, um, using the leg of the actual um, stand, especially because these are on kind of trolleys and this is a big weight, you need to make sure that front leg is towards the light source, in other words, that stops it being able to tip across. So that kind of minimizes us having to run any sandbags on the back. But if, if in doubt, we weight it down anyway so it kind of moves still around studio floor. So the Big Opta is the main source of light for the key light, but there's times when I'm going to refer to um, either a kicker light or an accent light onto the body or the face. Uh, we've just been doing some Halloween, in fact, so I've been using um, this light source as the main light, actually, at the end of the shoot, and I'd be using just that little bit of a honeycomb grid on the front if I just want a very small spotlight of light, or I take that off, and then obviously I'm still going to get a crisper light, light at the light source. When I'm photographing uh, using the likes of, uh, this is an Elinchrom D-Light 1, so it's lowest power, so I can shoot you know, F, F4 with hard light without any trouble. Um, but I tend to actually have the two lights, and they'll kind of blend together. So if this was set to F4 in its usual position, as I move it back a step, yeah, about two feet, it's about a stop. So you soon get into the habit in your studio space how to really start to take a light that was your key light to begin with and move it away from the subject to start to actually reduce its uh, kind of effect on the scene. The um, D-Light 1, in other words, this mini spot hard light is really giving me kind of deeper shadows and so on. And if I only want this light, um, I tend to run uh, with the accent light or a spotlight, whatever you want to call this light, okay? Uh, at some point it becomes the key, uh, the Key, uh, the key light though, but this is usually in my group two. My main light is usually group one on Elinchrom, this will be my group two, and then the background lights will be group four. What do I mean by all these groups? This is where Brandon, whoops, drop the honeycomb on the floor. This is where Brandon freaks out as I come close and I show you the kind of sky, uh, the sky port. But what this means is that I can either shoot in all, nice and sharp there, yeah. yeah, brill. All. Or I can switch onto the group and just press the group. This will just fire the main light now, okay? And then basically if I go into group two, that is just going to shoot that little honeycomb light, okay? Or in this case, the honeycomb's off, so it's just that. Group three, there's nothing connected into group three, so when I put it onto group three and I fire it, nothing works. When I put it onto group, uh, group four, uh, the background lights will fire, okay? So if I want all of the lights to fire, I put it onto all, and then basically they all go off in synchronization. So when I refer to group one, I'm referring, in fact, to my key, my key light. When I'm referring to group four, those would be the background lights or the accent lights. So I'd use those on a dancer where we edge light them or I'm using them onto the background itself to kind of give a, a kind of a silhouette look and things, really. Okay, so um, we've just got the uh, brown cloth background here just um, on a background support. Um, I use the kind of the, the background support from Last Light that allows us to kind of, or allows me to put a background up by itself. It's on like a pivot head here. So in other words, if I just, um, I take this off the stand for one minute.
take that off, Mark. You can see that I can lower this up and down, higher it, lower it, and basically this allows me to pretty much change a big backdrop without having an assist, assistance help. Uh, this time, obviously, when this is not actually on set, we move it on to set, that I need uh, an assistance help just to make it e easy as such, but I can li literally pick it up by hand, it's pretty much balanced out, and I can move it from one side of the studio to another. As a rule of thumb, though, probably if you're using a specific cloth background, I'd recommend you put it on to kind of some of curtain rail. Uh, IKEA do a fantastic wire, uh, and that basically allows you to kind of push it across, uh, and, and it's kind of minimizing uh, its effect within studio space, and it's cheap, cheap to do as well, and things. So the cloth background just gives me a bit of a, dif a difference. It's got a bit of a, a kind of a splattering, almost a tie-dye a tie -dye effect. As far as uh, before we head across onto the props and things, really, um, tri-grip reflector. Um, this is designed to obviously add ref uh, just a little bit of reflected light underneath the chin, just to kind of lift those shadows just a touch. Main lenses in use in studio are going to be 24 to 105 when I'm couples or families, and then obviously be swapped out. As soon as I go to the individual images, I'm usually going to swap it to either the 85 mil, um, or I'm going to move on to the fifth, uh, the fifth 50 mil. I'll avoid from using the 24 to 105 again. Meter, I, I know uh, you might think I'm a dinosaur, but I come from you know, a real working studio background where we were doing anything from six to seven sessions a day. It means on film photography, we never used to get to see until the film was developed if everything was, per was perfect. And the only way to guarantee there was perfect, of course, is uh, metering each of the light. Um, I'm using the Sekonic. It's the Lightmaster Pro. It's the one that, in fact, is built around Elinchrom. It means that, in fact, from here, I can fire the light to record the metering as well. So if I come into here on group one, you can see it's F4. Okay, so that's my working aperture. And in the same way, if I want to change it to meter for this other light source, uh, I kind of just press the group two and that fires. So I'm actually firing the groups from here and then obviously having the light dome in place to actually take the reading. So it's an imperative tool for me, and I would encourage you, if you are a busy photographer, to each time before the client arrives that you set ev everything up to a neutral so then you can concentrate on expression instead of everything else. We shouldn't forget... <laughs> hey, Hamish. Try saying that with my stutter. Uh, Hamish has been around for a while. Uh, he actually replaced Donald Duck. <laughs> Uh, and yes, I can do the voice, but I'm not going to do it now. And in fact, uh, Donald is retired at home in a little glass case that they had made for him for me. And basically, he retired in uh, 2000 when he got beaten up by a boy and his eye got split. And basically, I had to find another toy. I had a, a variety. Hamish is the thing now anyway. Um, but uh, as I said, it was good that my team, in fact, Without, without me knowing, I was so upset that Donald got damaged, but they, they had a special glass box made for Donald, and he basically sits on my wall at home and things. Really, I made so much money from that duck, you can't believe it. Um, anyway, so um, the glass ta uh, table wouldn't so much be right on set like we're seeing here. It'd be just out of shot. There's some other, other little things that we use. You've seen kind of the white plinths and everything else and things, really. Right, let's just come across towards the kind of the client zone. If you've ever been here on a workshop with me, unfortunately for the foreseeable future, we're unable to be doing it in a safe environment because of COVID, of course. Um, but that's why we're doing the streaming session so you can still be here, you can still be learning. Remember to get your topic requests into things, really. So traditionally, we'd have a lot more chairs than this. We've kind of minimized in them. Uh, and in fact, we invite a client to use one sofa or another. As far as any air arrears at present with COVID, we've got to clean down between clients and things, really. Uh, you've got to remember, I'm not really a photographer today, as it were. I'm more of a, tra a trainer. I run the Experience Group. That's the 100 photographers throughout the UK and Ireland. Uh, we're always looking for new photographers, so if you're interested, please get in touch. Uh, I'm their business development and creative development. Uh, and I'm obviously uh, running the academy and things, really. So I do have Mark Clegg Photography still, but it really doesn't do a lot. It's just for past clients, um, as you've kind of seen on these kind of shoots and things, really. So seating area, uh, seating area here, nice and child safe, which is key. 
Um, the only thing that has changed in the past uh, few months, of course, is cleaning area areas, mask areas. We've taken the model room out of use, so that would be the client changing room as a rule. Uh, now, basically, the client uses the ladies' toilets, which is quite large. We've put a table in there, another chair in there, so they can kind of go in there, unpack, hang everything up, and then when they leave, we clean all that down and so on. Um, as far as the kind of the wardrobe is concerned, um, I'm not saying that you need a wardrobe in a studio environment by any means, but because of the likes of the photography that we do, i.e. I do quite a lot of fine art por uh, portraiture as well, I shoot a lot of dance, I shoot a lot of young kids, i.e. the teens, tweens, um, and I always need a kind of a, a little bit of a fancy dress element at some point to give the fine art feel. Um, so over, over the years, we accumulate stuff from the likes of charity shops or kind of looking for bar bargains. Uh, one of the main things that we have here is kind of dung dungarees um, for kids um, of pretty much different a ages anyway that allows us to kind of use those, the Tom sawyer -y kind of best sold uh, and kind of actually uh, without a top on so then the bib and braces kind of hides all that and things really. But as far as the kind of the stuff here is concerned, if um, a client or even models on some of the academy shoots or the training events that we've done here um, haven't quite got the right thing, we basically kind of pick it off the rack. The only thing that we're do doing at present is that uh, if it's being used in a shoot, uh, it's obviously clean first thing, uh, but then it's actually left aside for 72 hours. Um, those are the only things that we've really changed. Any props that we use in the studio, they get wiped down or left for, seven, uh, for said, uh, 72 hours. A uh, bit of both, in fact, really. Um, but, yeah, we've just kind of minimised. So once upon a time, if you'd been here, you would have found loads of cushions on the sofas and all the kind of the soft furnishings. We just kind of remove that down. Uh, we don't kind of offer clients drinks anymore here and things, really, because, well, at present, it's just kind of minimising risk of everything. And the interesting thing is that when... Um, kind of these regulations for hand gel and everything else. We've actually always had sanitization units on the entrance to all studios and, in fact, on the en en entrance uh, within the office environment as well. So for us, it was just fine-tuning things a little bit and a little bit of a change, but not a huge change. Um, fav favorite things as far as on the rack is concerned? There would be some strapless uh, kind of white, almost bridesmaids dresses. There would be a kind of a ghost. It's a, a real fashion. I don't want to touch it at present, otherwise you've got to go out of commission for 72 hours, yeah? Um, but there's almost like a ghost dress here, uh, a kind of a cream one. Picked it up in Oxfam, a steel at like 30 quid. Um, I forget the design, a designer from the 50s now but we kind of priced it up online and it's still worth about 300 quid. It's just ripped to death now with all the things that we do. Then we've got a range of kind of different dresses. Uh, the yellow dress, in fact, is another steel that we found uh, in the likes of one of the charity shops. Uh, and that's used quite a lot, especially when I'm using training films rather than for clients. Uh, things as far as the jackets are concerned, we've kind of accumulated them over the years. Uh, I will touch one, in fact, really. Um, so if we kind of just pick this one off the shelf for a minute. Don't touch the other one, Mark, please. Okay, um, so little kind of jacket like, like that we'll find on the likes of the cheap um, kind of uh, stores. It's kind of a Chinese kind of delivery. Um, you'll find these, you know, this is around about seven or eight quid. These are worth as kind of throwaways. Uh, I bought two of these because we were shooting in the sea many years ago in a work, workshop with a guy. Uh, and basically, uh, just before, what was the big um, film that came, uh, that came out? The kind of the show, show uh, the showman, greatest showman. That was it. Thanks. Uh, I was ask, I was asking Baron, uh, uh, Brandon, not Baron. That's a new name for you, mate. Anyway, um, I was asking Brandon about uh, the film and things. And of course, you th thought I was asking you, but greatest show, show, showman hadn't yet come out, and we just happened to have this. And then, in fact, it was a great series of images that we were doing of men kind of looking at uh, emotion and kind of a little bit more kind of connectivity and things really. Uh, many of you know kind of my self projects that I do are based around kind of dance or the likes of. I often use a dancer instead of a model uh, just because I love shape and form. Uh, there's some amazing models out there as well. And obviously when you're choosing models, you usually choose them for a very specific kind of brief. 
Uh, if I'm shooting, I still shoot a little bit of commercial photography, not very much now. Um, but if we're shooting for a commercial client, obviously we'd have to go through all the kind of the model uh, kind of coming in as far as the uh, test shoots is concerned, sending their head, uh, the headshots off to a client to kind of uh, agree and so on. But these are the kind of things on hand you never know when you're going to need. Um, but one of those days you go, oh, the red coat. Um, so again, as far as props are concerned, we try and keep it down to a minimum. We've got some kind of old flowers and baskets and stuff like that. Um, as far as any of the new, uh, the newborn and the, ba uh, the baby kind of props, we're not that kind of photographer anyway, re uh, really. So e even though we do some new, uh, newborn photography, uh, it tends to be a little bit more kind of specialised than what you see as the newborn photography that we see online today and things really. Um, but again, I just thought you'd like to see a little bit baby sta station there. Obviously, if you're a photographer who photographs babies, um, then make it nice and easy for the mums. Uh, this little baby low, I think we got it three or four year, years ago now. We've stripped, we stripped it back. We usually have nappies in there, etc., etc., etc. But for now, with all the COVID regulations, we stripped, we stripped it back, so there's nothing in there. So it just has a quick wipe, wipe down between clients. And uh, again, it's all about the client experience, of course. It's making sure that they're um, going to go away with some amazing images and a little bit of fantasy at the same point. Uh, I'm, I'm not just a conveyor belt photographer. I'd like to think I'm not a conveyor belt photographer. I've obviously got a core style for Mark Cleghorn, which tends to be black and white anyway. Um, but then as far as the mixing up of all the other kind of part of the shoot, then we kind of, uh, um, depending on what the client brings in with them or the kind of stuff that I want to kind of bring energy into the shoot or a kind of a more fine art level. That's it. Um, hope, hope you've enjoyed uh, to see the other end of the, stu uh, the studio. We don't usually show that end, in fact. Um, it, to the other direction. <laughs> Should we dare spin around? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Let's kind of, uh, we'll just spin around a minute. I'll, I'll end up there in a second. Brandon is now having kittens. Uh, but at the, other, at the other end, in fact, uh, we can see that um, we've got the church windows. That's Brandon, by the way, with his mixing desk and everything else. Um, we've got the church window up here. And uh, this, get off my set, you, go on. He's flicking between it, almost pulling everything off. Um, but yeah, so we've got the church window for the daylight. You can see we've got um, other hanging things like our flower walls. Uh, we've got some kind of card just actually in the background to kind of do a little bit more of a different kind of style of photography. We've got amazing windows here. I mentioned about the, the wire rail. Brandon, I, I know it's the sun is coming through. Can you actually get a close up on that rail up there? Can you see it? So this is what I was on about when I was on about the brown background, kind of having a curtain that you can actually just swish across. Um, and that's just a, a kind of Ikea wire. They're absolutely brilliant if you're into the kind of the fine art back, backdrops um, because they can be un unclipped and clipped on. As it is, we're using very, very long black backgrounds to uh, um, kind of uh, not only kind of shield some of the shooting area in, stu in studio with it, but it's, all, it's also there to just... Uh, kind of add as another big black background for some of the dance photography that I do as well. Like I've cut all of his light, uh, light off. He's absolutely dying now when I'm moving around all his set and everything else. So let's kill it anymore. I'll move back over there. I'm sorry, mate. Here we go. There you go. Bannon's only been with us for a few weeks as well, and I'm sure it, feel, it feels like hell. Um, but yeah, so you had a little bit of a tour around Studio One. There's some other area of uh, the areas that we can't show you at present just because of all the mess. Um, uh, but... Uh, uh, at the end of a shoot, lots of kind of cloths that I just used in the last shoot, they're actually put away for cleaning now, ready for the next one. And that's us. But remember, um, in a few weeks' time, we start live at five. Uh, look out on the Academy Facebook page for no notification. Join up to our newsletter as well uh, via the Facebook page if you want or for, for, from the site. And then you'll actually know uh, that we're going to be live in five, as it were. Anyway, see you all soon. Thanks for joining me live on another Academy Behind the Scenes. See you soon, bye-bye.